This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. For over a month, Chris Johnson has been suffering with debilitating pain in his left hand. But now it's become unbearable. And it was just red and swollen. It looked like it was going to fall off, almost. And there's something else. Chris points out a mark that wasn't there the previous day. I noticed what looked like a small pimple growing in the palm of my hand, kind of deep underneath the skin. I knew right then and there that something was, was wrong. Gina drives Chris to the nearest emergency room. By the time they arrive, Chris is in agonizing pain. I said, look, I said, you guys got to give me something for this. I can't take this. I was just going crazy with the pain. There he was, literally screaming at the nurse that it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Hearing the scream that he let out, it got to me. I just lost it. A nurse gives Chris morphine to quell the pain before a doctor examines his hand. We talked about the little white thing there, and he said, well, that's, it's not really a pimple. That's not what you think it is. The doctor suspects Chris has MRSA, a highly resilient bacteria that can burrow into the tissue, causing pain, redness, and pus-filled bumps. He prescribes a powerful antibiotic to treat the infection and then takes a biopsy of the pimple so he can carry out further testing. Chris is sent home, and for the next week, while he waits for the lab results, he takes the course of medication. But it has no effect. And what's worse, by the week's end, Chris has developed a disconcerting new symptom. When I looked at my hand, there was another white growth coming out of the palm of my hand. It sort of looked like somebody's fingernail growing in my hand. I'd never seen anything like this before, and it, it felt like something was inside of me. Chris returns to the doctor. By this point, the results of the biopsy are in, but they're inconclusive. So Chris is referred to renowned orthopedic hand surgeon, Dr. Paul Zidell. Chris's hand was very enlarged, swollen, red. He couldn't make a fist, couldn't hold anything. Dr. Zidell takes samples of the two lumps in the palm of Chris's hand. Chris had an extremely bizarre type of growth in his hand. It looked like a small, thin, pliable fingernail. I've never seen this actual presentation before, having done this for many years. Dr. Seidel hopes the test will reveal the cause of Chris's infection. That was very frightening, knowing that this has never been encountered before. When the results come in, they reveal that Chris is suffering from a rare type of bacterial infection. Chris had a Mycobacterium marinum infection. Mycobacterium marinum is a type of bacteria found in both fresh and salt water. When it infects the skin, it causes an autoimmune response, triggering severe swelling and acute pain. However, Chris also has the bizarre growth on his palm. So Dr. Zeidel theorizes something else could be at play. There appeared to be some organism inside his hand. It was like, whoa, how can an organism grow inside of, you know, inside of my body? Chris had, believe it or not, barnacles growing in his hand. Barnacles are tiny crustaceans related to crabs, lobster, and shrimp. They secrete hard calcium plates that form a protective shell and give them their distinctive appearance. The doctor suspects barnacles have attached to the sheath around Chris's tendon, causing his extreme and debilitating pain. I said, what? I, I, are you kidding me? I didn't think our bodies could grow something that belonged in the ocean. I was really creeped out. This is really shocking to me. 
If a barnacle larva happens to land on a suitable home, it can take hold using a gland at the base of its antenna to release a strong brown cement-like paste. This substance is one of the most powerful adhesives known. So once the barnacle is attached, it requires an enormous physical effort to remove it. Dr. Zydal explains it will require multiple surgeries to remove the barnacles. And the prognosis is not good. The problem with Chris's hand is by the time I saw him, it was extremely severe. We actually talked about amputation. Um, this, 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 this is probably my lowest point. I cried. I just started, I just broke down. I broke down and cried. For hours, Dr. Zydal attempts to remove the barnacles from Chris's infected hand. All the tendons and nerves uh, were involved. So we carefully scrape out the top layers, the outside layers, or anything that's obviously damaged. For the next nine months, Chris takes powerful antibiotics designed to kill the mycobacterium infection, endures multiple surgeries, and suffers agonizing physical therapy sessions. Barnacles kept growing in his hand. So at each presentation in the operating room, then we have to just carefully remove it. My tendon had built up uh, a lot of scar tissue, and the physical therapy was really, really difficult and very painful. But finally, almost a year after Chris's first symptom, Dr. Zydell delivers good news. There was decreased swelling, no redness, no obvious signs of infection. We were just on cloud nine at that point, knowing that there was an end. But how did the barnacles get inside Chris's hand? In the ocean, barnacles use feathery appendages on their legs to filter small particles of food, such as plankton, from the surrounding water. Inside our bodies, blood is remarkably similar to diluted ocean water. Not only is blood mostly water, but it also has similar proportions of salts and other minerals. Having a barnacle in your body is bad, but what's worse is that the barnacle also brings harmful bacteria with it. Those can trigger the body's immune system, which in turn wreaks havoc. Chris thinks he knows the exact moment a barnacle attached to him. I was working in one of our bait tanks, and I remember cutting my finger on a barnacle and it bleeding a little bit. And just like I always do, not thinking anything of it. Doctors suspect the barnacle that penetrated his wound was carrying the mycobacterium. 